one and all to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast for our preview of Super Showdown, Saudi Arabia edition. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, hell, your sultan of extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for joining us again for a glorified house show in the desert. Oh, you. You're just angry that you're going to lose another challenge to the RWP Championship. You know, I, 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 I can't blame you. I mean, you were humiliated at Royal Rumble. You'll be humiliated at greatest wrestlemania i i know that's what they eventually want to call it uh, let's not but, don't even jinx it don't even say that let's avoid that yeah. at all costs everyone in the entire wrestling community is gonna shh don't give them any ideas so you've already done that too much i i feel like they've gone with a few of your ideas because let's face it if they'd be picking mine the ratings would be up I mean, who do you think was the real higher power and the real secret GM? I mean, come on. They, both great ideas that paid off marvelously, by the way. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so, all that all being right. said. <laughs> yes, all that being said. The house show in the desert, as you are known to call it. Super Showdown. Um, people have been complaining on the internet wrestling community, especially over across the pond in the UK. Well, why don't they do a big yearly show here in the UK? They can clearly do it over in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it clearly, hmm. I mean, because WWE says that it's logistical cost. Well, guess what? Hmm. The Queen of England isn't footing the whole bill, giving them billions of dollars, and then letting them keep all the ticket money too while they're at it if the queen of england was offering that kind of a deal <laughs> wwe'd be all over it but that's the deal saudi arabia's offering so yeah i feel like anybody asking that question doesn't exactly understand what the deal is here um for economics <laughs> so <laughs> just like basic economics math you know yeah demand, you know, stuff like that but anyways moving right along that's that's for the dog and chicken show check them out like, well in in the general spirit of that i guess the first match we should talk about real quickly is uh well one that uh really relates to the saudi arabia shows and that's going to be Mansoor versus dolph ziggler uh, those of you who don't I know Mansoor. <laughs> I mean, I'm really, no, Tony, I'm really liking Dolph Ziggler's chances here. I mean, he's a <sighs> former world heavyweight champion, a former money in the bank holder. He's held the Raw, or Smack, or mostly the Raw Tag Team Championships with half the roster. I mean, come on now. <laughs> How can you possibly be betting against him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Monsoor. And like, I'm, I was trying to think, like, wow, if you were to actually like put this guy's accolades together, you would think there's no way this is a blowout. How is he a chopper still, still? Yeah, the the thing about this match is, uh, you only if you don't like watch every fraction of original entering content that the WWE Network puts out. The only chance you have to see Mansoor is during one of these Saudi Arabia shows. He's the local talent, and he goes over big every time he's on the card. So obviously, yeah. this is going to be Mansoor. So my question yeah, to you: the, the, the good old local homeboy is going to bring one home for the home. Yeah, and whatever the Saudi Arabian cultural parallel is for grandma and apple pie. I don't know well, what those exact, but something like that. So that's my question to sorry, you, we I guess. Home team from an American point of view here, so we're gonna push it through that lens. But uh, yeah, Mansoor is gonna win via moonsault because he's shown he does pretty decent <laughs> moonsault. Well, we know he's going to win. That's that's not even relevant. Picking this is stupid yes. because, yeah, obviously but, Mansoor is going to win. But my question to, to Ziggler, you is how long is it going I, to be before they start demanding that he wins major titles 
on these shows because you know that that's going to be the, the direction they go. I'm shocked he hasn't already. I, I kind of am too. Um, but so with a tiny bit of Dalmore 12, I, I toast to you, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, you, you, more than Mansoor, you're doing Mr. McMahon a huge favor. And I hope, I hope you get a push on the back end of it at some point. But <sighs> am I hoping against hope here, T? I think you know exactly what you're saying, but you're being... <laughs> I mean, you're fake. Now, Greg, you're faking it. You Let's be honest. If you want to make Monsoor look good, there's nobody better on the roster than Dolph Ziggler to do it. I oh, mean, he, he is, is the absolutely latest. the perfect opponent to put somebody over. He's shown that he, in tenfold over the years. Yes, he's the Lance Storm of our generation. You put him <laughs> in there with anybody, and he's going to make you look good. If <laughs> if Dolph can't make you look good, you need to find a new job. So that's why Monsoor's in there. Um, yeah, so basically, if Lance Storm for- and Dolph Ziggler had a match, it'd have to be a first man standing match. Moving right along, <laughs> Angel Garza versus Umberto Carrillo. Now, this one has been building up a little bit. Uh, it kind of got bred because of uh, Andrade getting a wellness policy violation. So, uh, Garza and Carrillo are, are actually uh, cousins, I believe, in real life, and they've had a pretty good program so far. And we actually got to see both these guys over the weekend while we were in Houston for the Royal Rumble and Worlds Collide. So they have a good chemistry. This can be a good match. Honestly, I think this one could go either way. Who you got, champ? I did not know Garza and Carrillo were cousins. Um, yep. I'm, it's going to make me watch this match a little closer because – you know these two have had the perfect match worked out in their head since they were 12. So I'm looking forward to that one adds an interesting little uh, wrinkle to it. But obviously it's going to be Umberto. Clearly. I mean, who else would it be? Um, and I got uh. to say, I am not happy about wellness policy violations being made publicly known. I, I agree. Like, I, I agree. That should be handled internally within the company. There's no reason you, me, or anybody else should know about these violations. We shouldn't have known that Roman Reigns was taking Adderall, okay? We shouldn't have known that. Like, that should have been handled internally. Uh, So I don't agree with how this is being handled because when your company is all about your public image and you smear this all over the headlines, it's bad for your (laughs) public image. So... I don't know. I don't know what the proper answer is to that. There shouldn't be complete secrecy, but when it comes to somebody's private affairs, there is some there is such a thing as too much transparency. Uh, so- yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's very easy to keep it secret because all you got to do is uh, KFAB say he got injured. It's that simple. I, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I, you know what? I think you, you've got Carrillo on this one. I think I'm going to go with Garza. Well, you know, Tony, I do appreciate you doing all you can to uh, ensure I hang on to the title for uh, one more pay-per-view, but it's going to be Umberto Carrillo. Yeah, okay. Uh, Whatever you say, bud. Moving right along, one I know that you're super pumped about, Viking Raiders versus Gallows and Anderson. The rematch of the angle and outcome that should have never been. Yes, yes, it's... uh, now, it has nothing to do with the fact that you choosing Gallows and Anderson did cost me winning the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Championship a few months ago. It has nothing to do with that. Nothing at all, sir. Um, this is going to be tough because the Viking War Raider Experience Machine Thrill Ride is actually a pretty decent team if they could just get their marketing square. Um, Fair. <laughs> Anderson and Gallows, they have a best tag team in the world trophy. You don't have a t- tag team trophy. I don't have a tag team trophy. They, this one's tough, but I'm going to go with the War Viking Raider Experience Machine Ultimate Thrill Ride Pirate Experience in the Caribbean. I'm going to go the other direction, pick Gallows and Anderson because of two things. 
One being they have bullet club mark. No, because they apparently forgot that they were pushing the Viking Raiders and started having them lose matches. And two, one of those first losses was to Gallows and Anderson in Saudi Arabia when they won that trophy. So apparently they're protecting them there, if you can even call it that. So those are my two reasons. More discrepancy. I'm liking this. That is a good reason. Uh, They do treat the Saudi audience different than the American audience. So I'll give you that. Um, I think this is a way for them to try and get their heat back. Uh, The War Viking. I don't even... I can't even keep track of their name from week to week. I do enjoy making up new ones, but I've tapped that well for this week. Um, I really uh, think uh, they're going to have to get some level of heat back if they, I'm going to be honest, if they lose this one, Triple H don't seem that bad, does he, guys? NXT's calling some, calling some vets home. I mean, we yeah. were there. Tommaso Ciampa, daddy's home, daddy's home. You remember those chants? I always look around like, wow, Tommaso Ciampa has these people eating out of the palm of his hand. So who knows? Maybe the war raider, whatever the hell they're going to have to call themselves, will well, find better experience back in their old green pastures is what I'm thinking. If they lose this match, I would have to call their main roster call up experiment let's just call them back down and see how they do in a year or two unfortunately and it's not their fault they're wonderful in-ring talent they were it's like Mick Foley said in his book have a nice day a good name isn't going to make you a bad name will break you if you would have given Stone Cold Steve Austin the same beer, the same cursing, the same middle fingers, the same gestures, the same stunner, the same feud with Vince McMahon, but called him Chili McFreezy, stick a fork in him, he's done. So that's, and that's what they did with the Viking whatevers. And I'm, I can't invest in it. I'm not going to invest in it unless they keep a strong push. So. That's well, they already happens. screwed that up. But moving right along to the other tag team matches, we have the Raw Tag Team Championships, Rollins and Murphy versus the Street Profits. Uh, I This one, I feel like I don't think the Street Profits are ready, so I've got Rollins and Murphy to retain. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> you mean the... The, the glorified carnival barkers that are the street prophets since their call up, all they've done is done the hello, welcome one and all to the greatest show on earth. I mean, literally, the, one of them just needs a top hat and that, like, welcome to the greatest show on earth, world wrestling entertainment. Like, so that's been their job. They're good at it, they're damn good at what they do, but. I don't see them winning the Raw Tag Team Champions off of Seth freaking Rollins and the artist formerly known as Buddy Murphy. Uh, There you go. God, poor guy. Vince McMahon is just hacking and slashing people's names left and right. At least he gets... I think think Vince Vince honestly thinks that first names cost extra money. Nickname Buddy Murphy. You're now... Marky Murphy, like, ah, oh, shit, come on. No, Vince um, doesn't give you a new first name. He just gets rid of it because he thinks that he he is going to break the budget by having too, too many names attached to a superstar. Um, um, sir, Vince doesn't change your first name. Uh, Robert Rude would uh, care to disagree. Uh, <laughs> he went by Robert Rude before he even came to WWE. Get Get out of here with that. If he was doing that, he would have just called him rude. Bobby Rude now. Because that was the marketing campaign. No, if that stuck to your theory, he would have been called just rude. (laughs) Exactly. Now you're envisioning that. (laughs) All right. I'm a rude guy. Oh, no. Okay, moving right along. The other tag team championship match. (laughs) New Day versus The Miz and Morrison. 
This one, I'm actually looking for, I think out of all the tag team matches, this has the potential to be hands down the best. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I, 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 I don't know. I don't know here. Sleeper match of the night. That's, That's fair. That's my opinion. Um, a lot of people forget that Miz and Morrison were a really good tag team during the tail end of the Ruthless Aggression era. Yeah. So I see Miz and Morrison walking away with the belts. Uh, Damn it. Especially I was really if, hoping you were having a new day here because I, I kind of want to pick Miz and Morrison too. Well, here's the thing. The New Day's gimmick just changes so much if they drop the belts. You know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> what, where, do the, where does their character direction go? It's like, no, it's, the gimmick sells itself. You just let that, you just let that record spin. Okay. Well, yeah, here's yeah, the thing. You uh, do, you, do you remember when they would come out and they'd say, you're world famous two-time champs? You remember that, right? Because that was huge, right? You remember that? Do, oh yeah. Do you know how many? Do you remember? Do you know how many times they've held the tag titles today? As of right now. Yeah, as of right now, seven. I was about to say like twenty six. Like I, I yeah. <laughs> exactly. They can't win them a million times if they don't lose them. So that's kind of my thinking here. And I, I think, yeah, I, I just have a feeling it's going to be Miz and Morrison. Yeah. Um. I know. I, I did a little cheating, and I did some research, and actually watched SmackDown and the Miz Morris. Again, that actually, will hurt you. Uh, you know, you, you got a point. That might might be what gives you the W here. But I, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I think it's going to be Miz Morrison, uh, the New Day. They're just one of those guys that, for some reason, when they're faces, it's better to watch them in the chase. Yep. When they're heels, 100%. it's better for them to hold the belts. But yes. when they're faces, they're more of a chaser. You yep. let the fans have their fun for a little, like, yay, the New Day champion, but that gets old quick. So you got to get it off them, put them on something. But he knew, put them back in the chase rotation. It's a great, it's a great self-fulfilling prophecy and story that just keeps going. So agree 100%. <laughs> don't get me wrong. The New Day will continue to sell their T-shirts. So... Well, moving right along on that note, steel cage match, Roman Reigns versus King Corbin. I This, this is, is the feud that never <laughs> ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. Well, they just started wrestling and not knowing why it was, and they'll just keep on wrestling forever just because this is the feud that never That's enough. Ends. That that's enough. But yeah, that that gets that gives uh, some folks idea of this. I get it. Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin do not enjoy the company of each other. They are not fans of one another. They uh, don't like each other. Yeah, I established I, this. Um, I didn't think this was going to be the feud ender, but here we are. And honestly, it, it's oh, no, weird this, now. This still happen at WrestleMania. What I was going to say, bet like, they the, the feud enders at WrestleMania. <laughs> what do you want to bet? They wrestle again say, at WrestleMania, Tony. It's kind of hard for them to build a new feud for either guy heading into Mania at this point. So, oh I don't know. God, so, gonna, it, 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 if this it's really gonna isn't. It's going to be Rowan versus Barrett again at WrestleMania. Well, uh, all bets are off. I, I don't know at this Let's point. See we'll how long see. We can keep this going. We're just going to keep wrestling each other to SummerSlam. Uh, God damn it! All right, so I've got, I've got Roman. No, what? Baron's just been doing jobs all over the planet Earth. Yes, yes, it's gonna be Roman. Um, I, mean, I don't know how, but King Corbin just keeps the snide, shitty heel thing going in a way that still works. So. When they actually decouple him from this massive Roman thing, which, for lack of better terms, it seems like it's just what they're doing with the two of them, rather than them being in some kind of stasis. Um, because otherwise, like you said, what else are they going to be doing? I like At first, it was going to be The Fiend versus Roman at WrestleMania was the big rumor, but that's all changed in the last week, if you're going to believe the rumor mills and... God knows 
when do the dirt sheets or wrestlers ever lie? I mean, Dave Meltzer just made up an ESPN story and it made the WWE stock go up $100 million in a day. So when, when do the dirt sheets ever lie, T? <coughs> yeah, I don't. God. I don't know. Yeah, you hear about that one? Yeah, I did. Boy. Fucking, yeah. Melchior. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think – if Dave says something at this point, I think it doesn't matter what it is. He honestly believes it. He could say he poops unicorns, and he dead serious <laughs> means it. Oh, he could say – now, now, I, I just want you to know, from my backstage sources, um, Bruce Pritchard just sh- squat and shit a live chicken. It happened, and I will defend the absolute death the very notion that this happened. So, we love you, Dave. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Moving along. <laughs> it's the all the tro- rip, really. Is. The yeah, trophy yeah. gauntlet match, because we have to have one of those. AJ Styles, yeah. Andrade, Rey Mysterio, Bobby Lashley, Would Eric like Rowan, our truth It's, it's, it's going to be AJ. It'll be AJ. Yeah, it's got to be AJ. You know why? One simple reason. Because he's AJ Styles. He's the phenomenal AJ Styles 2018 Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Wrestler of the Year. That's why. No, the reason is because that way Gallows and Anderson can have a trophy and so can AJ. Yes. And 2018 Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Match of the Year and 2019 match of the year runner-up for Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. So, not bad. Yeah, if, if, you, if you only vote in B-level format. Oh, uh, you know what? Tell yep, me just take your blow and move on. No, nope, nope. <laughs> no. Just take the death blow and move on. It's okay. Bailey versus Naomi for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Um... <laughs> This one's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. First of all, how much gimmick are they going to put into this one? Uh, because uh, you remember Naomi versus Lacey Evans, or not Naomi, Natalia, sorry. Uh, Naomi's in this match. Uh, Natalia versus Lacey Evans, it was a pretty straightforward, like, this is the kind of women's grappling match you would have seen, like, in the 1960s. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, if. There was going to be a grappling match in an Amish community in, like, 1943. That would be the grappling match, you see. So, I don't know. I mean, Naomi's very flamboyant with how she likes to move and how she does things. Yeah. Um, Bailey, I think, will be a perfect heel in this match. I think she's going to get across heelish female behavior. And I don't know if you know this. Bailey has been SmackDown Women's Champion for nine months now. Yeah. And she's just been chugging along with a quiet little long reign that she's building something here. I hope they let it. There's a part of me that thinks they're going to give Naomi the rub here tonight, though. I'm. <sighs> no, nah, I'm going to say Bailey's going to do something heelish and retain. Yeah, Bailey's going to retain. This isn't even a question for me. Uh, you know, I could see it, but no, no. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to see, like, cause, you know, Naomi, like, she's whipping her hair around and she's doing all this crazy stuff when she's on her way down to the ring. Is that going to fly with this very conservative audience? I, I'm, that's, like, again, the mystery surrounding the presentation of wrestling for some people is almost as fascinating as compelling as the wrestling itself in the ring. So, and that'll be one that I'm going to be curious about. But yeah, it's going to be Bailey with dastardliness. Dastardliness. Yeah, this, is, this is more of a, a feud program starter, and this is going to be very buttoned down like the first women's match we saw on the last Saudi show. So I don't see a title change there. Uh, we have... The WWE Championship and the Universal Championship. And I'm sure we're going to be very different on our picks on these. But let's start with the WWE Championship match. Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet. Um, I really like Ricochet's uh, chances here. Okay, you pick Ricochet. Got it. Moving along. 
<laughs> I'm really liking his chances here. Um, Pick he him. Might Pick him. Survive. Pick him. <laughs> like that's that's what's going to happen with a, a good pal Ricochet. Um, then pick him. Come on, do it. Brock is going to throw him as high into the air as you've ever seen a human fly into the air and cave in many internal organs in the process of doing it. That's what I see happening with our good pal Ricochet here. Um, yep. <laughs> and I see Brock even kicking him in the nuts again for the Royal Rumble thing. Uh but Rick is going to do some pretty cool stuff. Oh, it's going to be a he, fun match, for sure. He does fit the mold of people Brock likes to have matches with. Like the Daniel Bryans, the AJ Styles, the Finn Balors. He's gotten good matches out of all those guys. I think he's yeah. going to get a phenomenal... Like Again, if you go back and look at how many Brock matches we've rated way higher than we ever thought we would... I think this is going to be one of them. Now, granted, it's a Saudi match. Everybody's kind of just trying to get through it so they can fleece the, you know, get as much money out of these marks before they wise up. I, yeah, that's what they're trying to do over in Saudi Arabia. But Ricochet is going to put everything he has into this. This is one of those matches that uh, you don't get this opportunity very often if you're a guy like Ricochet. So even though he's not going to win this, he's going to. He's going to give this an excellent performance, and I think it's going to be a hell of a fun match. But, yeah, it's going to be Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah, Brock Lesnar. I, I got the Beast Incarnate. I mean, I, I do have to say, I mean, Brock, from one champ to another, I do understand how heavy the crown hangs. And I was there in the arena with you at Royal Rumble where, you know, you had some promise, kid. You had some promise. I mean, you're no Phil KOE, but, you know, you, you got some promise. I mean, send me some tapes. Maybe I can get you booked. But beyond that, um, we'll see how that progresses. But I do see Brock um, retaining in a way that would be easy to defeat Ricochet, but not the King of Extreme. My goodness. Okay. So, that was fun. Last but not least. And true. <laughs> yeah, let's get nothing but completely factual information on a wrestling podcast. As long as you don't let the lies get in the way. Last but not least, Universal Championship. Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Bill Goldberg. We're really getting this match. Tony, two things. First of all, I need to address what you just said there. To quote the great Dutch Mantel, a.k.a. Zeb Coulter, every single thing that comes out of my mouth is the 100% absolute truth, except for the few lies I tell. And moving on to the main event, The Fiend versus Goldberg. Goldberg, do you know how much my inner Mark is marking out in the Marky marking of the universe of Marks, Tony? I'm, just a little bit, yeah. Just I mean, a little bit. We got the Fiend, basically my favorite wrestler of the new era. Goldberg? Fucking Goldberg! Did you know he's Goldberg? I did. He does a spear... Yes. And then after that spear is done, I don't know if you've ever seen this, dude. It's fucking crazy. He picks them up for a fucking jackhammer, and people lose it. I may have seen that recipe or time or two. Once, once or twice. So, yeah. Um, the way I would want this match to go is we think it's going to be a Survivor Series Brock versus Goldberg. Goldberg hits a spear. Hits it one more time, even if he's got to. Jackhammer. Everybody's thinking, fuck, really? One, two. Fiend kicks out. That would be my ideal move. That would be my ideal how I see the match playing out. Now, it would kind of be pretty much like WWE to put the belt on Goldberg, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, for me, this one comes down to WrestleMania because what we have uh, discovered 
is that they don't mind putting this belt on somebody new at Saudi Arabia. That's where the fiend want it. So are we gearing up for a Goldberg versus Roman Reigns universal title match at WrestleMania? Or are we gearing up for a fiend versus Roman Reigns universal title match at WrestleMania? Or could we get lucky and actually see Goldberg versus Reigns and Cena versus the fiend for the universal title, which is what I want. But, I you cut out am, there for a second. Who are you wanting for the universal title? Oh, at WrestleMania, I want to see the Fiend versus John Cena. Yeah, for the universal yeah, I'm title. with you. Cena, Cena, Doctor Thugonomics versus the so, Fiend. In that sense, I'm going to pick. Get back that favor he was owed. Oh, yeah, this would uh, this would do a lot of uh, a lot of good nature for all the people who were pretty devastated by that WrestleMania 30 match they had. But I digress. And the next I'm, thing. Um, oh, oh, but oh, I, but I also oh, any, no, don't even mention that. Anyway. And, <laughs> I'm and gonna, Norton like six times, but I digress. Uh. <laughs> I am going to pick... Ah, part of me feels like Goldberg could walk away with this, but I'm going with The Fiend. How can you go with anybody but The Fiend? It's got to be The Fiend. Please let it be The Fiend. Oh, my God. Yes, it's going to be The Fiend. Um, why do I say this? Um, when I went to the merch stand at the Royal Rumble, they had a Fiend t-shirt. They had Fiend masks. They had Fiend gloves. They had a goddamn Huskis the Pig Boy stuffed toy. They had just about everything you could imagine. Fiend related. Didn't see much on Goldberg. Goldberg wasn't moving the merch. Um, Fiend was like the kid that was sitting right next to me at the Royal Rumble. Fiend gloves, Fiend mask, Fiend shirt, Fiend, 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 Fiend. He was there to see the Fiend. He's the most interesting and compelling thing in wrestling right now. So I don't see any compelling or interesting reason to take the belt off of him. We've had Goldberg going into WrestleMania as Universal Champion. It was amazing then. Even if they did it, it would still be amazing now. But this is the Fiend's time. And I think him versus, yes, Cena would be a great WrestleMania main event. Um, Roman Reigns versus Goldberg now would be a good one. Um, God, it's really too bad The Rock retired. That was always the WrestleMania match for Roman Reigns I always really wanted. But... Um, no retirement in wrestling is ever too permanent, so we'll see what happens there. Exactly. Um, in regards to Goldberg, it, it'll probably be Roman, but could be anybody. Um, I think that makes the most what, sense. What, or it could be a triple threat. Goldberg, Roman Reigns, and of course, Baron Corbin. <laughs> oh, just a sour look at disappointment on your face. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, don't let it be there, please. No, folks, I didn't freeze. I'm just trying to find a pretty way to wrap this up since you just soured everything. Thanks for that. <laughs> well, getting back to the match, here's the bigger question. Do you think Goldberg eats the mandible claw? Oh, that's a good question. Um <laughs> I, I want to see what you think. Man, I don't know. Answer. I don't know. Obviously, he's got to go down here, right? And how do you do that? I I think that almost makes more sense than him eating a pin. Do you see him like – you remember how Seth Rollins had the stage blood coming out of his mouth for – that marvelous – Okay. Why do you keep bringing up shit that we don't want to think about? Dude. Um, <laughs> They could just have Goldberg do that, and the referee does another referee stoppage because, you know, Goldberg's spitting ketchup everywhere. I mean, we got we to gotta stop this. Come on, guys. This is, this is naughty, naughty. You let go of him right this instant, sir. I will no, no. So that's – So we're 12 that's, hours that's removed – we're 12 hours removed from the start time for Super Showdown, and you've effectively, in like three minutes, made me not want to watch this show. Congratulations, sir. 
<laughs> well, at least I have an effect on my audience, sir. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm looking forward to this match. If nothing for if nothing else for, uh, cool, you know, the, the tag team matches are actually going to be really good. Yes. AJ is going to do amazingly again. Yes. Um, I'm curious about the politics of whenever they allow a women's match to go on. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, I mean, the reason we're all truly there is to see Mansoor. Like, so that's <laughs> on that yep. note, as yep. I'm known to say. All that being said, folks, join us here for all the happenings in the world of wrestling and all the crazy happenings thereof right here at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. Like, share, subscribe. You know it's the right thing to do. I am your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, signing off, handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner. Tony, take it away. Hope we uh, hope this is a good show and it's not one of those weird ones where Phil scrounges up a victory out of horrible picks. But regardless, I will once again become champion. And in this time, Tony, two belts. Very soon. This, very, very soon, this Phil. This belt's going nowhere, Tony. This belt's staying right where it going is. Going right here. Right here in Castle KOE. Right here. Above this one. You, right here. You think you have any chance of taking this belt from this champion, Tony? Yes. I am the yes. greatest champion in Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast history, and I will not be smirched by the likes of you, sir. So, mm, you consolation champion, well. but whatever you want to call it. Galleon, you vagabond outlaw, you. You shall lose to the champion of this story, Phil KOE, the hero of all the stories. Catch you later, folks.